Today we're going to be looking at Samurott. Not Hisuian, just regular old Samurott, that's right. Samurott is pretty slow, but it has a nice special attack stat which means it can hit pretty hard. Pair that with sticky web support and a Pattaya Berry with substitute, and all of a sudden, you have yourself a pretty strong special sweeper. Today's first game with Samurott is against Dr. Banana Man, and it's a pretty good one. So with that being said, let's jump into the first game. And the battle begins. So my opponent decided to lead off with Komo as I led off with Ariados. My plan was get the sticky webs up right away because they're going to be really beneficial towards my opponent's team. Um, they obviously live with this thing and I'm a bit scared, but I'm like, you know what? Let's just go for the sticky webs. They go for a Clangorous Soul, which is absolutely terrifying. It does reduce their HP a little bit. And then it turns out after they get their Omni Boost, which is very terrifying for me at this point because they've set up on me on turn one they also decide to pop a throat spray which really makes this thing terrifying so we go for a sticky webs get them up on their side of the field that's all great and everything you know what can you say about that next turn i decide to go for a poison jab as they go for a flamethrower taking me all the way down to my sash as you would imagine no burn which is thankful i'm thankful for and we go for a poison jab just to get a little bit more chip damage off on the uh, Como because obviously it's a threat. I was kind of hoping for the poison a little bit, but I'm kind of glad I didn't get the poison because, you know, hacks is hacks. Uh, they go for another flamethrower anyway, taking my poor Ariados out. And uh, that's it for the little spider. He's, um, he's gone. Dead. She's gone. So now I decided to go into my Meowstic male because I was like, you know what? This thing's fast. Very fast. I could Thunder Wave it, but, you know, I'd, I'd rather not miss. So I'm going to go for a trick. And we actually have the lagging tail on this Meow Stick. And um, with Prankster, it's a really cool item to trick over. But they ended up Terrasalizing anyway. And they're going to Terrasalize into a Ghost type, which is really interesting. So I'm guessing they just didn't want to get a Luring Voice or something along those lines. Maybe I was Focus Sash on the Meow Stick. You never know. We go for a trick, though, and we completely cripple this Como. Doesn't matter how fast it gets. With that lagging tail, it's always going to move last. Uh, which is why it's a bit superior to Thunder Wave. But anyway, they go for a Terra Blast Ghost. Um, which is really random and out there, but you know what? It works out in their favor in this particular matchup as uh, Meowstic does go down right there. And then, so, you're probably thinking, look, this Como's gone off the rails a bit. It's going to be hard to take down. Well, now I can literally go into anything I want to to take it out. And since it's a ghost type, I figured, you know what? Let's go into Typhlosion. So we bring in Cobra for real, the Typhlosion Hisui. And we don't have to reveal that we are Choice Scarf because we outspeed them anyway because of the lagging tail. So I decided, you know what, let's just go for an eruption real quick and take this thing out. There we go, the eruption comes through, and down goes the Como, which is fantastic. So getting rid of that big threat early on, granted it took out two of my Pokemon in the process. <sighs> Panic averted, completely gone. And they bring in Colossal, so they've probably figured at this point that this Typhlosion, we're probably going to be Choice Scarfed. Which means we're locked into a move that is four times resisted by this monster. So what do we do in this situation? Well, I decided even though it is weak to fire, Iron Treads is probably the best thing to switch in because there's no way they're going to go for a fire time move. If anything, they go for a Stealth Rocks or something along those lines. So we bring Iron Treads in to save the day. And if they did go for an Earthquake for whatever reason, then it's so be it. But they actually go for a Sunny Day, which is really interesting. So with the sun being up, our eruption power has gone up. So I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. Iron Treads is in. We may as well just go for whatever we want to go for an Earthquake. They withdraw the Colossal though, which is fine. As uh, we went for the Earthquake, they do bring the Dondozo in, which can definitely take an Earthquake. However, its water power is now weakened by the sun. So, interested to see the Dondozo coming. So, we go for an Earthquake. And of course, as you'd imagine, it does about a quarter of its HP, which is fine. So, you know what? I'm thinking in my head, let's just go for a Stealth Rocks. Let's get the hazards up. It should be fine. So Stealth Rocks come through, which is amazing. They're up for good pretty much now. Um, unless they have a wrap spin on the team, I can't remember now. Anyway, they go for an order up, probably predicting something else to come in, like maybe the Chestnut or something. They just wanted to get some nice damage off. They do pop a Air Balloon in the process, but you know what? It's fine. At this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go into Chestnut. Chestnut pretty much walls this thing. We can set up Leech Seeds if we want to. We can go for Spikes. You name it, we can go for it. So they go for a Wave Crash, which is going to bounce right off my Chestnut. No problems there. The sun is up. It's resisted. We get some Rocky Helmet Chip and the Recoil from Wave Crash. We're good to go. So I decided to go for a Leech Seed as they ended up switching out the Dondozo. Going back out into the Dragonite this time, which is really cool to see Dragonite. Uh, you love to see Dragonite. Anyway, they go for a Le we go for a Leech Seed. That's going to obviously uh, sap their health every single turn, which is going to be great for me. The Harsh Sunlight does fade, which is kind of good for us because if they have Fire Punch, I guess it's got less power. 
we're gonna get some health recovery anyway from that leech seed, which is always nice. The next turn, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go for a knockoff. I don't want a weakness policy dragging out on my, on my side of the field. They actually go straight for an outrage, which does nearly half our HP, but it does give them some Rocky Helmet chip. And then we go for a knockoff, knocking off their heavy dewy boots. And we're good to go. We are good to go. So, um, to be fair, we did have the stealth rocks up, so um, it was probably pretty obvious that they had heavy duty boots. I think at the time I did actually think that. But anyway, anyway, this thing's locked into Outrage. I'm just going to go for spikes. I may as well. Outrage comes through. No damage. Get some Rocky Helmet, which is great. And then we just go for a spikes real quick. And they're not confused after this turn, even after two Outrages. So they've got, they've got a third Outrage in them. And luckily, because of the Leech Seed, we have a third Outrage in us as well, as it's going to sap away the HP, meaning this next Outrage we will live, and they're going to go down to the Rocky Helmet. So they go out for an Outrage once again. We live on one HP somehow. I knew we'd live, but I didn't think it'd be that tight, as the Dragonite does go down, and we set up another layer of spikes, which is absolutely fantastic. There we are. In comes the Mighty End, and this thing, I was kind of like, what is it going to do? I mean, it could literally blow on me, and I'd probably faint because of the fact that I've got one HP left. But you know what? It's fine. It's Mighty Enna. I'm not really too worried about it, but I never like to sleep on these uh, sleeper picks like Mighty Enna, all right? So, decided to click Spikes because I might outspeed because of the sticky webs. We do outspeed to get the final layer of Spikes up, which is fantastic for that Dondozo. As they go for a Psychic Fangs to take us out, which is great. So Psychic Fangs does take out Chestnut, but it does do a little bit of chip damage to them in the process with the Rocky Helmet, which is absolutely fantastic. And now I'm like, you know what? It's time to bring out the Samurots. Get some substitute shenanigans going on. We know we outspeed because the Chestnut outsped, even if they're quick feet, which they probably are with the Toxic Orb. We should still outspeed with the Sticky Webs. Um, because Samurai is naturally faster than Mighty Ender, I believe. So we go for a Substitute, and they go for a Facade, which is going to bounce right off the Substitute, of course. Obviously, the Substitute faded from their Facade attack once again. So I'm just going to keep going for Substitutes until we go for the Pattaya Berry uh, Special Attack Boost. They go for a Facade once again, and that is, of course, going to once again take out my Substitute. I decided to go for another Substitute, because once again, I'm trying to get into Pattaya Berry range so that I can finish off the rest of their team as they go for another facade and it's unfortunately redundant because all it's doing is breaking my substitute which is helping me further by allowing me to get closer and closer to that Pattaya Berry range and the Torrent range for Surf as well. After one more substitute, bringing our health down to a measly two and we get that Pattaya Berry boost in our special attack, the Mighty Enna is of course going to go for a facade once again to break our substitute, which is absolutely fine because this next turn, Samurai doesn't even have to lift a finger as the Mighty Enna is obviously going to go down to the poison this turn. So our substitute fades. And unfortunately for Dr. Banana Man, so does their Mighty Enna's life. In comes Weezing. So they're probably thinking of full health Weezing should be able to take, well, nearly full health Weezing, should be able to take a Surf from a plus one Samurai, right? Well, unfortunately for them, we go for the Surf, and it is, unfortunately for them once again, going to take out the Weezing straight away, which is absolutely amazing. So Weezing goes down, and in comes the Dondozo. So Dondozo coming in is pretty cool because they might not realize that we have the secret Terra Electric tech. And they're going to come in, they're going to get hurt by the stones and spikes, but they're probably thinking, you know what, Unaware is going to make it so I can live one of these Surfs. But no, we're going to electrify ourselves right now, Getting a giant light bulb on our head because we've got a bright idea about what to do against this Don Dozo. And with this bright idea, we go for a Terror Blast, which is going to completely, utterly destroy this Don Dozo from the health it was at, which is just amazing. So, Don Dozo goes down. And with that, their final Pokemon comes in, the Colossal, at full HP near enough, other than the fact that it's going to get hurt by Stealth Rocks and Spikes and Sticky Webs. And this was their only way of getting rid of those hazards we stacked. They just couldn't get a good switch in with it, really. As now all we have to do is click Surf, and that is going to be the game. Surf comes through, and that is GG right there. So, whew, GG Dr. Banana Man. That was a fun game. It was cool to see, like, Mighty Enna and such. Glad Samurott saved the day in the end there. The next game is against Fornabil, and this one is a funny one. And the battle begins. So, Fornabil's going to lead off with Plug the Ampharos. As I led off with Ariados, as I normally do, because I like to get the Sticky Webs up straight away, you know. Um, so, first turn, obviously, I'm going to go straight for the Sticky Webs. 
As at the end, we're going for an agility, which is really interesting. So they're trying to sell with their Ampharos right off the bat, which is quite a funny strategy. So uh, we go for the sticky webs, and that's it. They're up pretty much until they get their spinner in or whatever has a clearer they seem to have on their team. So the next turn, I'm like, I'm going to go for a Mega Horn. I've still got my Focus Slash intact, and if they do attack me, it'll take me down to my Slash activity and my Swarm ability. They go for a Meteor Beam, boosting their special attack, and then they pop a Power Herb. So this Meteor Beam just annihilates my Rhydos to 1 HP. And to add insult to injury, we're in Swarm range. This Mega Horn could have KO'd, but we missed. So we're off to a very rocky start right now. I decided to try and go for a Mega Horn again as they go for a Dragon Pulse, which is fine. And um, Dragon Pulse is obviously going to take out a Rhydos. And I'm thinking, right, crap, what do we do against this Ampharos? So naturally, I decided, you know what, if they've got Meteor Beam and Dragon Pulse, they've got to have Electric Stab and they've got Agility. So we should be able to wall them pretty much with Iron Treads. So I bring Iron Treads in and I'm just like, I'm going to go for straight for an Earthquake. They go for another Meteor Beam, hope, hoping and praying probably that they live an Earthquake here or that we sell up Stealth Rocks or something. Get another special attack boost, but unfortunately for them, the earth is going to crack underneath his Ampharos, and down the pink little lamb goes. In comes Flint and Speed, the Luminion, which is really interesting to see. So I know I can't take this thing out of an Earthquake, so I also know they can't take me out with a Hydro Pump. So I'm just going to go for a Stealth Rocks. May as well get the hazards up while they're there. They don't really have any ha potential hazard setters on their team, so I'm not too worried about Iron Treads going down if we need to. But they ended up going for a Tailwind, which is really interesting to see. So the Tailwind is pretty much going to negate our Sticky Webs for a few turns. Um, and I decided, you know what? Let's bring in the Samurott. So Hot Wheels, come on back. Bring in the Samurott. We know we can wall this thing, no problemo. As Samurott comes in, nice and shiny, gotta love it. They go for an Encore. They, they try to Encore me into Stealth Rocks, which is a really cool play. So I'm just going to go for a Substitute now, as they ended up going for a U-Turn, which is going to do a little bit of chip damage. But you know what? Chip damage is fine, because it gets me close to that Pattaya Berry range. So that's great. They ended up U-Turning them, themselves out into the Rotom Frost, which I was like, you know what? That's a pretty cool play right there. Because Rotom Frost, if it's Choice Scarfed or something, could potentially ruin our plans. So I get the Substitute up anyway, and you know what? We see Leftovers, so we know they're probably a bulky Rotom Frost. Uh, maybe they're going to set up a Will-O-Wisp, but well, they won't be able to will o wisp yet. But they might Volt Switch on us to break our Substitute, so I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to Surf right off the bat. They go for an Electric Terrain, which is really interesting. So I'm guessing that their Sceptile they have in the back there is an unburdened set with the electric seed. So I go for a Surf, Substitute still intact, and it's a 2 hit KO on the Rotom Frost, so they must be physically defensive, if anything. So that's pretty good to know. The Tailwind does wear off, which is amazing, so now I know I outspeed them the next turn with Surf. And there's no reason for me not to go for a Surf. A Surf comes through, taking down the Rotom Frost just like that, which is absolutely amazing. So down it goes in one extra clean hit. In comes... Drigmar, which is of course their Sceptile. It's going to come in, it's going to get caught in the sticky webs, but that doesn't matter because now its speed is going to get doubled after being hit by Stealth Rocks, of course. It's going to be doubled by them using their item, the Electric Seed, boosting their defense. Luckily, not special defense. So we go for a free Ice Beam all the time here. Now, they ended up going for a Swords Dance. I personally, don't know about you guys, wouldn't have done this. I would have gone straight for the attack because this uh, Samurai is clearly a threat. But not necessarily. If you don't know what the Samurai is going to be trying to do, you're not going to think it's a threat because it's a Samurai. So they're clearly underestimating Samurai here, which is amazing for me. As I go for another Ice Beam, they go for a Leaf Blade, taking out my Substitute finally, uh, which is great for me because it means I get to set another one up on whatever they bring in next. Substitute is going to fade, and then the Ice Beam is going to come through and cleanly take out that Sceptile. See, if they'd have done this the other way around, if they'd have gone for a Leaf Blade straight away, they wouldn't be able to take out my Substitute and then take me out the next turn. Although I would have switched out if that was the case, but, you know, it didn't work out like that. Now in comes the MVP of the game, the Crab Brawler. Nice and shiny. Look at that little guy. He's a drunk little boxer. We're so hilarious. I'm obviously going to go for a Substitute here because I want to see what this Crab Brawler plans to do. Maybe they go for a Bulk Up or something like that. They actually go for a Thunder Punch in Electric Terrain, which is pretty cool. And that's obviously going to break my Substitute. So I'm like, you know what? I only need one more Substitute to get in Pattaya Berry range here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip out the Secret Tech. 
as we finally reveal to them our trump card, the Terror Electric, knowing they're probably going to go for another Thunder Punch here. So we can definitely take a Thunder Punch through Substitute. It won't break our Substitute if we're Terror Electric, which is basically what I'm going for here. So we Terror Electric, we get up a Substitute, and of course, it's going to take us right down to that Pattaya Berry range, which is amazing, boosting our special attack by one stage. And with the Sticky Webs, we're outspeeding everything on their team pretty much. So that's great. As a substitute comes through, they go for a Thunder Punch, and nope, 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 it is not going to take us down at all. They lose some HP from the Life Orb, and we now get a free whatever we want to go for on the Crab Brawler, which is going to be Surf. So naturally, I go for a Surf, as I said. Surf is going to come through and cleanly take out that Crab Brawler. Still no idea why they brought Crab Brawler instead of Crabominable, but maybe it's just like a, a, a an appearance preference. I personally like Crab Brawler more than a Crab Abominable. It's just ugly. <laughs> In comes Flint and Speed of the Luminion. Now, they might be thinking, what can we to do to them? Um, we are Terra Electric, of course, but they might think we might not have Terra Blast. We, unfortunately for them, do have Terra Blast, as that is exactly what I'm going to go for right now. And at plus one special attack, this Luminion, unfortunately for them, doesn't really stand a chance as it gets annihilated by the Terra Blast. Leaving the Luminion scorched and whatever you call a dead fish out of water. In comes Six Wings, the Hydreigon. This is where the problem begins because Hydreigon can Terra, but I don't know what it's going to Terra into. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to go for the Ice Beam. They do, in fact, whip out the Terra. And in my head, I'm like, you know what? We've got to substitute up. We get a free attack. Just go for the super effective attack Ice Beam. They Terra Poison, which is really interesting. But this is actually kind of a good thing. And the reason being is because we can still finish this game with Samurott after our substitute is gone. They go for a crunch, breaking our substitute with a critical hit. Don't think the crit mattered. And we obviously hit them with a plus one Ice Beam, which is going to do a nice little chunk of damage to the Hydreigon. It's not nothing too crazy, it's just over half, you know. Now I'm like, let's switch out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sack off the Typhlosion Hisui right now to the crunch. And then I'm going to bring, my plan is to bring Meowstic in, trick it the lagging tail since it's not a dark type anymore, so I can trick it with Prankster. And then go into Samurai and finish it off. But this is how the game actually went down. So they go for a crunch, Typhlosion does go down. That's all part of the plan. All part of the plan. <laughs> it's funny because this is like unfortunate hacks, but at the same time fortunate hacks. So Meowstic comes in and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to go for a trick here. And this doesn't work out in my favor at all. Do you know why it doesn't work out in my favor? This is a very bad misplay on my behalf. Why is it a misplay? I don't know. It just is. Because we don't die to a crunch. I thought we would die to a crunch. We don't die to a crunch. We live the crunch. So I'm like, right, okay, I'll go for a Thunder Wave next. I'll let it KO me. As long as the Samurai outspeeds, it's fine. Six Wings, unfortunately for my opponent, gets fully paralyzed. Meaning I have no choice. I have no choice but to just KO this thing with Meowstic and I didn't get to finish off with Samurai. And that makes me sad. But you know what? It's fine. We still won the game. It's still a W. So regardless, pretty fun game. Pretty interesting game. Pretty fun, funny Pokemon C and like Crab Brawler. Yeah, that was, that, that was a good one. GG Fornabell. That Crab Brawler really thought it was on the team, huh? But anyway, that's the lot. Let me know if you enjoyed this post-commentated style by leaving a like or subscribing. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And with that being said, I'll catch you all in a bit.